All right, so uh, good afternoon. Now let's get started on our speaking part. So our first topic for today is about your hometown. Okay. Mm -hmm. So could you tell me the name of your hometown? Uh, my hometown is Lanzhou. Oh, sure. Um, could you describe your hometown to me? Uh, well, Lanzhou is a fairly small place, even though it's the provincial capital of Gansu province. And apart from being small, uh, it's not that economically developed, but uh, it's a nice place to go to, uh, especially during the summer because uh, it's not that hot and uh, the climate there is uh, fairly comfortable. Sure. Okay, so do you think you will continue to live in your hometown in the future? Uh, no. Um, actually, I've already made that decision last year. Uh, after I graduated, I decided to um, live in Chengdu in the future. And uh, I don't really want to go back to Lanzhou because I guess um, I've become a little bit tired of it after having lived there for so long. Okay. Um, then could you tell me what are the things that you like the most about your hometown? Uh, well, the things I liked the most, uh, I think it would include the food, definitely. Um, because uh, Lanzhou is a place where we have a lot of ethnic minority groups, uh, the food there is pretty diverse. and. Um, well, I like spicy things, and that's what Lanzhou also has. Uh, and apart from that, I guess I like uh, the Yellow River. So Lanzhou is supposed to be the only provincial city in which the Yellow River runs directly through. So um, it, that provides a pretty good view. Good. Okay, now let's move on to talk about, you know, friends. Okay, so are your friends mostly in your age or at a different age? Well, um, mostly my age, I guess. Um, I'm not a very uh, sociable person, I guess. Um, I'm kind of like an introvert, and uh, it's kind of hard for me to connect with uh, a lot of people. So my friends are just mostly my classmates from school. So we're yeah, definitely the same age. Okay. Um, do you prefer a few close friends or many friends? I prefer a few close friends. Um, I think that when you have a lot of friends, um, you don't really have all that time and energy to get to know them that well. So they're not uh, very, you know, friend. They're not very great friends on a deep level. Only people that you call when you want to gather together, I guess. Um, a few close friends. I think that's all you really need in life. So when you have some troubles or when you uh, want their advice, you can go to them. Sure. Alright, so do you see your friends you know, usually during the week or during the weekend? Well, um, I'm a teacher at one of those uh, supposedly what you call a cramming school. So um, we have to work on the weekends. And uh, when I see my friends, it's usually during the week and uh, well, in the evenings mostly, I guess. Alright, so the last time when you saw your friends, what did you guys do? Uh, we just did the usual stuff like uh, going out for dinner. And after dinner, uh, I think we went looking for one of those little cafes. Uh, no, not a cafe. I think it was a yeah, it was a bar uh, that had cocktails. But uh, we didn't want to go to a very noisy one, so we looked for the quiet kind. But uh, we were not successful, and then we just went home. Excellent. All right. Now let's proceed to talk about restaurants. Okay. So, what kind of restaurant do you like to go to? Uh, I like to go to hot pot restaurants. Um, well, we're in Chengdu, so where else would you go? Sure. Do you often go to restaurants to celebrate? Uh, no, <laughs> not to celebrate, but I do often go to restaurants. Um, we don't really need to have a special occasion, just uh, whenever we want to meet up, uh, we go there with friends. Okay. So, do you prefer to go to a restaurant alone or with your friends? I would definitely prefer going with my friends because going to a restaurant alone, that just seems kind of sad. And uh, eating alone, especially at those large restaurants, eating alone while um, all the other tables are feasting and being merry, I think it would, you know, uh, feel kind of sad too. Okay. Um, well, Adiana, uh, would you consider, you know, opening a restaurant? I actually have considered that option. Um, but my mom and dad are against it. Uh, they, back, back when we were in America, um, my dad he had a lot of friends who had opened restaurants before and they were always complaining to him about how tiring it was and the stroll and, uh, and the toll that it had taken on their families. So um, even if I want to, I guess my parents are going to be the biggest obstacles in that path. 
Okay. All right, that's all very good about part one. Now we're going to, you know, move on to part two on the test today. Okay, I'm going to hand over a card with, you know, to you with a topic. Okay. okay. So you will have one minute to prepare, and then uh, you're going to, you know, talk about the topic on the card, and also the questions on it for one to two minutes. Okay? Okay. All right, so now let's get started preparing. Okay. Okay, so the topic is, please describe a place where you read and write, and a place is not your home. And you have to tell me where this place is, how often you go there, who you go there with, and also how you feel about this place. Okay? So you can get started whenever you are mm -hmm. ready. Okay, so now let's get started, you know, talking about this topic for one to two minutes. And uh, if I interrupt you, you know, there's no need to worry, alright? Okay. Okay, get started. Okay, so um, this place that I like to go to when I need to read and write, um, it's a cafe that's in Trenjo, actually. So, um, Trenjo, it's uh, a small coastal city. It's pretty close to Xiamen, okay? And uh, this is where I always went uh, when I was... Um, in, uh, when I was doing my postgraduate studies. Okay. So um, I used to go there like once a week. I mean, if, if I lived there, I would you know, still go there, but unfortunately I don't. And um, I would like go there once a week, uh, maybe with my boyfriend or by myself. And the cafe it was so uh, nice and also beautiful that I started recommending it to all my other friends and even my colleagues. Uh, so um, it you know, we, we, we would end up going there together whenever we needed to do our work, okay? And uh, I said that it's a very nice place because, you know, it's one of those uh, three-story buildings. It's, it was actually, you know, a house. And um, on every floor, I think there were about three or four rooms, uh, and there was only, like, one table in each. So it was, uh, you, you know, you had your own private space, and uh, it was also very quiet. Uh, there wasn't any loud music, and there were... There wasn't, you know, uh, other people who were chatting so loudly that you would never be able to focus. I would say that it's not only hard to find, it's also one of a kind. And um, I, just, I would go there to read and write because I can't concentrate at home. Uh, at home I have uh, two cats, okay, so whenever I try to uh, work on my computer, they're always, you know, just walking across the keyboard. And uh, when I lock them up in my room, they start yowling and crying and then I just cannot concentrate at all, okay? And um, how I feel about this place? Well, um, like I said, uh, it's big and it's spacious, so um, I think uh, that's a great thing about it and I feel pretty lucky to have been able to discover this place. And um, another thing uh, that I like about it is that I feel like it's a very cozy place. Um, it's a cafe, but it doesn't feel all that commercial, okay? It just feels like you're going over to your friend's house for, like, afternoon tea. And they have this big golden retriever that's very gentle, and then he likes to, you know, uh, sit next to you and uh, just gaze up at you, like, adoringly and lovingly. Perfect. Okay. So do you plan to go back to this place in the future, the cafe? Uh, yeah, I definitely will. Good. Good. All right, so now we're going to, you know, since you like reading, um, now we're going to move on to the third part of the task, okay? All right, so uh, the first question I have for you is, do you think books are important to a person's development? I would say that books are very important to a person's development uh, because, in my opinion, books, they shape our worldviews. So um, the kind of books you read that, on some level, to some extent, decides what kind of person you will become, I think. Uh, like, um, if you read, if all you ever read are romance novels, then I think you're going to be a kind of naive person in life. Um, but um, if you also read some other genres, I guess, uh, you will start to form your own view about this world, and those views that you form, they will kind of decide where you go in life. Okay. Um, Dan, are you saying, you know, um 
by reading books about gangsters or you know um, schemes, are people going to become you know? Uh, no, I, I wouldn't say that they would become bad, yeah. but um, I guess it would depend on you know the mm, the message that those sure. gangster books are trying to send. Uh, like I remember when I was a kid, um, there was talk going on about how they were going to ban video games, yeah. right? So many people said that because video games are violent, okay. it on some extent uh, reflects in our children, and uh, because children they're so innocent, they are easily uh, influenced by mm -hmm. the things that they see. So there was talk going on about uh, eliminating uh, violent video games. Okay. So also like in the case of Harry Potter, I think it was the fifth book, uh, J.K. Rowling, she used to have one book come out a year, but then that book, the fifth book, took about two or three years because people didn't want that book to come out. They said that um, it was going to reflect poorly on religion or something. So I guess um, you wouldn't become, you know, bad if you read gangster books, but <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, but um, it would have some kind of uh, influence on you. I sure, guess. I understand. All right. Well, we just talked about the violence in uh, video and also books. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, let me ask you this question: Do you think our government should have some control over the content of the books? I think they should, and actually, they do. So um, all the books that we get to read, I guess um, they're kind of like approved by the government. So if you have books about how we should destroy this world or about how um, we should rise up against our government, I don't think those books are ever going to be you know, on the market. So, um, and also, especially in the cases of children, like we established before, children are easily influenced. So if the government does not have control over what kind of content, uh, what we should show children, I guess um, we're going to be dealing with a generation of uh, very hard to deal with kids. Good, okay. So, um, well, do you usually you know, read books um, on a device or do you read paper books? Uh, I read paper books, like, mm -hmm. um, what, what do you call that? Kindle, I guess? Sure. Yeah, stuff like Kindle yeah. or even iPad. Okay. I, I just can't stand reading on those electronic devices. It's uh, really inconvenient because I like to jot down notes when mm -hmm. I read. And um, I like to be able to yeah. feel the paper, you know, okay. between my fingers. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you just talked about you know your your books. Now let me ask you this question. Okay, do you think paper books will disappear in the future? Um, I don't think so. I think that uh, more and more uh, people might become fond of electronic books, but I don't think paper books will ever disappear. It's kind of like uh, the same with you know a cash-free society. Um, we're talking about cash-free societies, but I don't think it's ever going to really be cash-free. Just like how we're talking about how electronic books are going to take over the world, but I don't think you know, uh, paper books will ever disappear. So there's something that uh, I think sentimental people and also nostalgic people will definitely hold on to. Yeah. Good. Okay, that's all we have for today. Okay? Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right.